What's up, everybody? My name is Maggie. And I'm Reed. And today we are back with another episode. Today we are focusing on myths, misnomers, frequently asked questions, all things about chiropractic, and more. Yeah, really all of that. And then touching on some of the hot button topics of like, what does an adjustment do? Is chiropractic safe? How do we slightly differ? Not that we're better or worse than anybody else, other medical professionals, other chiropractors, get into those weeds a little bit, but that's kind of the intro for the day. All right, so kicking off things with myths, misnomers, frequently asked questions, things like that is, first of all, we're chiropractors. We move bones traditionally, we can do more. I think you guys hopefully know that, but can bones actually be out of place? I love this topic. <laughs> I think, it sucks most because like we say like, oh, your rib is out. This piece is out. It's like we feed into this. but Like we will say like something is out. Yep. But if your bone is out of place, you will not be in my office. If my segment is rotated, t twisted, tilted far enough where it's actually out, aka like decapitated, internal decapitation, you're feeling neurological symptoms and that's an ER visit. You're like, not in my office. Correct. <laughs> yeah. When we say a bone is out of place, maybe we're just feeling like it's not moving to its full potential. Yep. So when I am saying like, oh, your ribs out, it just doesn't have that motion in that joint that we yeah. want it to have. So I feel like that's where it gets tricky is like, we're not moving any bones. We're just introducing seeing motion back into yeah. a joint that maybe just is a little bit timid. Yep. And it doesn't want to move as it should. So like when we're feeling something that's not moving, this could be like your shoulder, a ball and socket joint, or it could be a spinal joint, it could be your ankle joint, it could be any joint. Things should move. We should have bounce. If it moves this far, let's say two degrees to the right, it should move two degrees to the left. There are some specific joints that don't move equally medial to lateral, up to down, whatever it is. But like for the most part, especially if we're talking spine, we should be able to rotate as far as I can to the right, equally on the left, unless we're a super unilateral athlete. But with that, like, when we're moving something, you said this, is sometimes we don't get that like click and pop, which is another question we get up. If we don't get that click and pop, all we're trying to do is introduce movement. Like yeah. Maggie's adjusted me many times and she knows like my mid back because I've had nine fractured vertebrae or not, ribs, a couple fractured vertebrae, I think four fractured vertebrae, five maybe. Like my mid back doesn't move very well, no. but you're introducing more motion to a direction that it wasn't previously wanting to go crappy analogy and i hate when other chiropractors use this but i use it too so i have to it's like if we have a tree that's growing sideways and if i hook up my f550 to it and just yank on it i'm not going to pull the bumper off my f550 i hope i don't have i don't think they make those trucks but rather if this is like a little sapling it's just going to snap that tree like we need to slowly write that and that's where like an adjustment is just that on the flip side do adjustments actually stick do they work i don't know i'm probably the biggest hater on Maybe not. I'm not the biggest yeah. hater within our profession on We can we can name names, but we don't have to. We could name names, and I'm pretty sure people know who yeah. we're talking about. Which, hey, for good reason. But, it's awesome. I mean, I think that there is such a time and place for adjustments, but I know, like, for myself, when I was getting adjusted weekly, yeah. I was in more pain then. If I didn't get an adjustment, then now when I only get it when I'm really, really feeling like I need it. So yep. I think there is such a window of time where it does make sense and it's not going to be beneficial for everyone to always get an adjustment yeah. and it's not a fix-all it just really like it's a tool so if we think about mechanically it's a tool like just like <clears throat> dosage of medicine like we can't have overdose of adjustments a couple things the body needs units of stability and mobility an adjustment by nature a manipulation moving these bones that are out of place these segments that are out of place is introducing more mobility to that system. If all we do is add more mobility, 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 and we don't add stability to own that, yep. we're gonna be losing ground eventually. And that might take one adjustment, and we start losing ground, we have to introduce stability via exercise and engagement after yep. one kind of movement, which is kind of what we do. Um, sometimes it, we need to move things first to get out of this painful protection cycle. Yeah. Because bones, like we function on a musculoskeletal and neurological basis. If we just move the skeletal component and don't do anything with the neurological or the muscular component, like bones are just anchors. Yep. The things that move those anchors are muscles and nerves tell muscles what to do. We have to work on those things too. We're missing like, you're missing a piece of it if you're just focusing on the adjustment side of yep. things. Like you are missing a part of what's going on with that issue. And not saying that you're not doing a good service, but like no. it, you're missing 
bigger efficiency of that system, yes, right? Yeah,、like, and I think a lot of times I see a lot of women who come in and see me, and I don't do as much adjusting as typical chiropractors, and they're like, "Well, I just had to keep going in, and I couldn't stop seeing my chiropractor because、yeah. that was the only way I felt good." And even men like that, yeah. But in a lot of cases, I think the issue with overadjusting women is they are a little bit more hypermobile、mm-hmm. than men, and especially like around during, pregnancy and different portions of the cycle. During pregnancy,、yep. during their cycle, like we know, women are more likely to tear an ACL on their cycle. So maybe adjustments aren't always going to be the best option、right. for so, them. Soapbox moment. This is not a myth, myth or misnomer. Why are women more likely to tear their ACLs? This is me advocating for women, by the way. We blame it on flexibility and mobility and blah blah blah. But like we could also look back, especially like this is starting to change now. And I think as a female athlete, you get this. Like,、yeah. what was your access to training and the best trainers, the best ATCs, the best whatever versus the men's teams growing up? Oh, not for, as good. We didn't get like, any. If we could, we got give, minimal. Exactly, and that's at a collegiate level too,、yeah. right? Like, if we could give women the same allowance to training and. Protocols and mechanisms and equipment and facilities and everything else. Maybe even though the morphology is different, the relaxing and other chemical hormones are different. Like maybe we could also get decreased genu bugus collapse well, related non traumatic injuries. Yes,、right? which is yeah on a, a completely different soapbox. Again, soapbox level, but、yeah. it is that's so true. Like it shouldn't be that case, but that just shows like how different the female body is and、yeah. how much. Can change within a month.、Yeah. So if you have a chiropractor who's seeing someone weekly or more than once a week, they might be in a completely different state each time、yeah. of the month. So I don't know. I feel like we have to attack that a little bit differently, and maybe an adjustment isn't always going to be、yeah. the best option for a female. Or or maybe we、point. can at this time of month and not that time of month. Yeah. This time during pregnancy and not that time of during pregnancy and things. Yeah. Like that. So I feel like that's kind of. Also, a missing link that、yeah. can sometimes come up. Yep, you hit on something there. Like the another myth is like once I start going to a chiropractor, I have to keep going all the time. We know that's not true. Like, think about if I sprain my ankle and I get put in an air cast boot. Like, do you have to keep that air cast boot that crutch forever? Like, do you、yeah. have to always walk around with that? And furthermore, do you start with an air cast boot and then you go to a crutch and then you go to a walker and then you go to a wheelchair and now you're bedridden for the rest of your life? Like, we don't want things to get worse. No. We say this all the time. If we're doing a good job at our jobs, we should be seeing less and less patients, or of that specific patient, that individual patient, because that means we're making them better and making them move better and feel better and go out and live the life they deserve living, right?、Um, so, what's your answer to like, do I have to see a chiropractor forever? I say no, with a little like asterisk、Caveat. on that. Like, no, probably not. But are you going to get hurt? Between、yeah. now and the rest of your life,、yeah. are you going to come up with some ache and pain between now and the rest of your life, or between the end of our care cycle and the rest of your life? Probably. Yeah. So, is it beneficial to see a chiropractor or provider every couple months or so, or as injuries come up? Yeah, I think it's beneficial to get like that every two month to three month visit in, just、yep. a little check in. Like, let's make sure everything's moving good, especially if you're a really active individual and you're doing a lot of、yeah. activity. I think that's important. Even if you're sitting at a desk,、yep. sitting at a desk all day is painful. Yeah, like or standing, like or standing, doing full time server at a restaurant. Like, what do they want to do at the end of the shift? Sit down. Like、yeah. being on your feet all day is painful too. Anybody、yeah. is doing something where they're probably repeating movements multiple times throughout the day.、Yep. Whether that's sitting, whether that's standing, whether that's doing a high level activity, training for a marathon, training for something. Yep. They're probably going to need care every couple months or so,、yeah. and I would say that would be.、Helpful. So I have a very similar answer to that. Like, no, you don't need to come back, especially for the same thing. Now, might that thing, your knee during training for a marathon, get re-injured? Yeah, and maybe that's six months later, maybe that's six years later. And having that person, that guy, that gal to go to, who addressed your knee—I don't want to say fixed your knee, but like addressed that issue in the first place—that's a great place to start, right? But similarly, especially for the higher level athletes, I'm seeing higher level, like meaning. Junior high, high school, college pros, or even weekend warriors who are training for something like having a baseline. That's where I think that, like you said, every two to three months, just as a check in. Not to be egotistical, you guys, but like we're pretty damn good at our jobs,、mm-hmm. and if we can see something that might become an issue before it becomes an issue, that's a huge place to start. And so, like that check in, even when things are feeling good, I love seeing those visits of people who are prioritizing that aspect of their health. 
And I'm not trying to sell this or pitch it hard or anything like you need this. Like when we can see a system that's moving, when a patient comes in, they're like, I feel 100%. I'm like, great. This is what I want to check out because if anything were to happen six months, six years down the line, I want to get you back to this great feeling. Yeah. And that's, I like seeing those times too. So moral of the story is no, you don't need to go forever, but you might find yourself coming back because it's awesome. Next on the list is like, we're talking about bones not being out of place and just like microscopically needing to move into a potentially better direction as an anchor point. How often we should be coming in? Is it even worth coming in? Is chiropractic safe? Yeah. I mean, there's your simple answer. Yes. And next subject. <laughs> it's safe. Of course. Why would we do it? Um, I think there's a risk with anything. Yeah. There's a risk with going to any provider and doing anything where you're going to be doing movement mm -hmm. or reintroducing movement into an area. Yeah. Like there's a risk. Um, and not, not even the risk of like things might get worse before they get better, yes. which is definitely a risk with anything. And that's or where like, like we're catching people usually in a mid stage of collapse. Like it's yeah. getting worse. Like, just because you see us, especially that first visit, like I've seen people things might get worse before they get better. Who have but. like walked out of my office feeling worse than they felt better. Yeah. As after they leave. Like even in that same hour. Yeah. I've worsened things. But, but we're exploring. We're trying to assess then the situation. It starts to feel better. Yes. Yeah. So is it safe? Yes. Are there those like I think everyone thinks about like those stroke cases that come up. Yep. Which is like, so what Maggie's saying is the biggest claim to fame that like dare I say like the western medical world has against chiropractors is the risk of stroke when we're manipulating somebody's neck which the way which we manipulate somebody's neck should never happen there is a risk of stroke and that's what's always in the news and we hear about this all the time so a lot of things that I've seen in the research I've done is that if someone's gonna have a stroke they are probably going to have a stroke Yep. regardless of so you're already at that risk of having a stroke they're just at a bad place in time and they just so happen to be in the chiropractor's office when it happened yep or and, after it happened or whatever yep it is. and that's like a lot of the times the case which yes there are ways that you can manipulate the neck to make it a little bit riskier yeah i think like but most chiropractors wouldn't put a patient in that yeah. position so, i don't know how to say this without like doing it yeah, making so, it scary either for no, anyone so else but let's flip that like if we want to make people not scared, like how we are taught and how in a cervical adjustment, a neck adjustment goes, is we're supposed to take people into a little bit of flexion. That's the end answer right there. If we take people to an, so flexion, rotation, or tilt, whatever we have to do from a little bit of flexion. If we take people to an extension and then tilt or rotate. It's that extension that's where, is what, yep. that's what we, you don't want. Which out like of. any chiropractor, PT, anybody who has a scope of practice to manipulate stuff, good luck trying to get something to move with extension like things it's get not going to do there. anything yeah. it's like we need flexion to move something anyway so we should never go into a, an extension and therefore never cause a stroke yeah if done properly so yeah that's like my take is like you would have to be really doing your job wrong yeah <laughs> to cause that or like yeah force a stroke to happen right and for lack of a better term for it but i think it's safe so i get my neck adjusted yeah me too even though to be fair, like, here's a cool thing. Like, I don't like getting my neck adjusted. No. And I adjust patients' necks. But like, <laughs> and I didn't have a scary thing. I don't know anybody who had a stroke. Well, I do. But, like, not from a chiropractor, by the way. Um, but, like, I just don't like my neck being handled. Mm -hmm. Like, call it past childhood traumas. Call it whatever. Like, it's okay not to like something getting moved. There's other ways we can do that. And that's kind of a little segue into, like, chiropractic, the adjustment, manipulation, is safe less than normal risks of things that are going to happen anyways the rehab corrective exercise muscle work like all of that is safe too that's your end all answer is yes it's safe just like everything else is kind of safe right but on the sense of like you can make things worse before they get better like recently i had a patient shoulder patient and things kept getting not worse actually not worse at all like they just kept staying the same clavicle fracture surgery to repair the clavicle steel plates pins rods all that fun stuff removal of all that material in there she was in a sling immediately after the first injury for six weeks straight and then she said 50 percent of the time for the next six weeks so very immobilized and now we're seeing her a year and a half after all of this stuff happened like i told her first session i'm like listen i might not fix fix a hundred percent of the people that walk through my door and I shouldn't even say might, I will never ever in my career fix 100% of the people that walk through our doors. We're not the answer for some things. No. And I think that's important to be upfront with people and the audience, whoever you guys are, of like, 
there's a right person for the right job at the right time. Yep. And for her, could we have been the right person for the right job at a different time, like a year and a half ago? Maybe. But at this point, like I just told her, listen, I'm not going to charge you for this visit because it's done right now. Like this was three or four visits in and like 0% progress. And she was doing everything, doing all the exercises. We were doing all the treatment. And there was 0% progress. It's like, we need, we need to change something. Like for what you have going on, and in my experience, evidence-based practice, and she was fully, she was almost mad that I told her not to come back. I'm like, well, listen, like things aren't progressing. Do you want to continue wasting your time, money, effort here? Or do you want to try a different route? So, Go somewhere else yep. and make it work. Yep, for sure. Chiropractic is safe. Yeah. But it's still kind of being labeled as this like pseudoscience. Before we get there, like, and with that, like our chiropractor is actually real doctors. Like I am legally Dr. Reed Lewis Nellis, legally Dr. Maggie. Kothi. Kothi. I yeah. Make sure. I was like, didn't know if you changed your last name with the marriage. Uh, legally not or professionally not. Anyways, like we have this doctor title. We did go to school for three and a half years after undergraduate, three and a half years straight through, no breaks, no summer breaks. Yeah, um, med students get breaks. Yeah, med students get breaks. Dentists get breaks. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> ophthalmologists get breaks. We didn't get any breaks. We got like a three week break in between trimesters. But so the pseudoscience thing, like, yes, it's safe. I'm actually more so on the board of like, how old is chiropractic? 100 years, 100, 110, 115, something like that. It's pretty new. And like, this is, shows you how much I care about this profession. Like, I don't know the year of which it was founded. Some chiropractors might, and sorry if you're that person, you want to come at me, but go for it. <laughs> um, whenever it was started, it was kind of founded upon pseudoscience. But, Megan and I were talking about this earlier, like, it wasn't that long ago that medical doctors, Western medical doctors, were performing prefrontal lobotomies for mental health issues. So like, yes, we're new the, the profession as a whole is in its infancy. We're still figuring things out. 80 years ago, things were changed from 100 years ago. 70 years ago, things were changed from 80 years ago. Like things are still coming out. And that's why I think it's important to look at the research and follow, dare I say, common sense of like, yeah. does this work or doesn't it work? Well, and also like evidence-based, I feel like as a whole, or like even going off of, yeah, evidence-based, like from that pseudoscience, like evidence is also in front of you like what are you seeing in what's happening in your patients yeah. what are you seeing in the research like you have to take it all into account so i feel like there are some evidence-based docs who get too in the weeds of this is what the research is saying so i'm never going to do this yeah. i'm never going to do that but what are your patients telling you and what are yeah. they seeing it's also a part of an evidence-based practice so something that i bring up all the time when i'm talking to other providers doesn't matter what kind of provider they are uh, mostly like manual therapist based providers is i try my best legally to be evidence-based, right? Like I'm never gonna go outside that box, but my goal is not to think outside the box or work outside the box, but push the edges of that box to be bigger and bigger as the years go on. As I gain clinical experience, as I gain patient experience, what they tell me has been working in the past and things like that, because that's part of evidence-based and like what the research is saying. Because if we only go evidence-based, if we're shackled by what the research and what clinical experience tells us, we're never going to make that box bigger. No. So I always bring up the idea with other therapists as like, have you ever recommended foam rolling? And everybody's like, yep, I have. I'm like, great. Is that evidence based or evidence informed? Some evidence on foam rolling says like, yeah, go for it. It feels great. It might open up this neurological window for other things to take place. Blah, blah, blah. And like patients love it. Yeah. Patients love rolling on foam rollers. People love like, foam rollers. Yeah, foam rollers, lacrosse balls. All and everyone things. has one. Yeah. So Thank it's you, easy. Cheap Amazon foam rollers. Yes. <laughs> um, but that's more evidence informed. So like clinically, I actually work more evidence informed trying to push that box versus yeah. just staying in that lane. And that's where I think like getting anti-protocols is kind of a nice place to be because yeah. if somebody comes in with biceps tendonitis, that biceps tendonitis might be different than your biceps tendonitis is different than that. Like they're going to present differently, yep. which is what's fun about being evidence informed, which yep. is a better phrasing of it anyways, is that everybody's going to look differently. Everyone's going to respond to something differently. Some people don't respond to manual muscle work. Which allows you to tailor, like that doesn't respond to manual muscle work, maybe at that time, or maybe it will later, or maybe it never will yeah. kind of thing. Like you can tailor all these tools and tactics into that individual person. Yep. So, yeah. so just take what works, use the tools that Use the tools that work. And yeah. that's, that's the definition of that's evidence base. Yeah. So there you go. So that kind of leads into like not pseudoscience, but it was kind of based off pseudoscience. So I'll lean into that a little bit. But now, hundred and some odd years later, are we real doctors? Why are we called doctor? I don't know. Do you go by doctor? 
you answer the phone. Oh, when I answer the phone, I say, hi, this is Dr. Maggie, because I feel like if I answer and just say, hello, it yeah. would sound a little weird, because people calling- Hi, what do you want? Yeah, people calling me are calling me as Dr. Yeah. Maggie, yep. but I never, I don't sign my emails, Dr. Maggie. My emails are signed Maggie. Yep. I'll introduce myself as Maggie. I'm never going to expect someone to call me Dr. Maggie. Yeah. I think people end up doing that anyways, yeah. but I don't- go by doctor yeah. often. The only time I do is when I'm answering the business phone. Like if I'm answering phone rings, it's a business line. It's the only time I do it. I'm not tied and like married to like, hey, I spent all this money. I spent all this time. I spent all this passion on becoming a doctor that I feel like I need to. And I did spend a lot of all that stuff and I'm proud of it per se. Yeah. But I'm not so proud that I need somebody to call me Dr. Reed. And like, I no. almost feel weird when people call me that. I'm like, it's just Reed. I'm wearing camouflage joggers and a t-shirt right now. Like I show, yeah, I, I show don't up in leggings. Be, yeah, like no like, one is. <laughs> we don't need to be super professional with this. No. So yes, we went to school. Yes, we earned a doctorate in chiropractic, um, but we're not real doctors. And like, I joke about this all the time. Like it's not just being self-deprecating. Like if somebody's having a heart attack on an airplane. I'm not standing up. No. There's like, no way. Do I know how to do CPR and all that stuff? Get a yes, nurse up like, there before you get me up there. If there's any get other anyone. qualified medical professional on the airplane, call them first, right? It's so like, we're not that kind of doctor. But in the same vein, a gynecologist doing heart surgery probably isn't going to work out either. Or even like, look at a dentist. Are they doctors? Yeah. I look mean, at, so my brother-in-law is a veterinarian. Yeah. Like, he's a doctor. Yep. He's an animal doctor. And that's great. Yes. And like, nobody has any pushback on that. Podiatrist. Yeah. Like, and they're all doctors. They're all doctors. PhD of theology. It's, it's a... Okay, that's a stretch. It's, but. A, doc it's a doctorate in yeah. your specialty yeah. field. So yeah. it's not an MD, it's not a DO, yeah. which are the traditional doctors that we're seeing. Yeah. But it is still yeah. a doctoral degree. In a specific niche. Yes. I stay in my lane. I don't do surgery. No. Like, it's I don't not want to. No. Don't trust me with the scalpel. <laughs> so, so yeah, we're real doctors and like some... Other professionals, especially in the chiropractic and PT world, would be like, oh, we go through as much schooling as MDs. But on that same vein, like we just talked about, like we go we don't go through the same school. No. Like, it's and a lot of people bring up that chart where it's yeah. like, this is what I did as a chiropractor, this is what medical two thousand four hundred dollars or two thousand four hundred hours for chiropractors, two thousand two hundred hours for medical yeah. providers or medical yeah. MDs. But what that doesn't take into account is the specialty yeah. side of what we're doing. And also that that's just the medical school four years. Yeah. That's not their residency. That's not their fellowship. Yep. That's none of that extra Which stuff that like they have to do three after. three to five years after. If not more. If not more, yeah. And we don't have that. Nope. We have our three and a half years, no breaks, yep. but then we are out in the world, we're practicing. With basically like a clinical rotation residency for an MD is done during school, they have their internships and things like that, but like their actual residency is done after they graduate. Yep. Classically. Our internships, which is not a residency, is done while we're in school. Yep. So you can call it like killing two birds with one stone, but also like if we're taking all this time away with our internships, away from school, studying, learning, et cetera, like one could argue like those 2,400 hours are almost watered down the last year and yes. a half that we're in an internship yep. because it's not... It's not as Our mental focused. capacity isn't there. Right? Yeah. We're not focused. We're getting hands-on experience, which is great. But We no. do take a lot of board exams. We do. Compared to other professions. They're super fun. So fun. So fun. Four boards exams. Real awesome. So we take four. I think MDs take one yep. right after med school. I don't know. And then they take a specialty if they go into a specialty. Like they want to be field. ENT so or I think, something like that, yeah. I think. Like a I don't know. A board-certified orthopedic surgeon would take a orthopedic surgery board exam, exam. Yep. Yep. yep um and pts just take one yeah ot's just take Which one we could even wait those like and like what does what is the point one, of us taking four that one might be harder than our four or it might be you know like part four boards our last boards exam was all yep. practical hands-on stuff <clears throat> takes two hours yeah like maybe their hands-on stuff and their whole one exam is a 12-hour exam yep. i don't know that but and we don't that's the thing is like We'll see a lot of chiropractors pulling in like, oh, we take four board exams, which like, yeah, we did do that and that sucked. <laughs> and I feel like we just say it because we want people to we know want, 
we want, did getting, it. Like we had to do it. We <laughs> we were forced to. It's like being a Detroit Lions fan. I just crave that pity. But like that doesn't make us better better than no. any of those ones that just take one exam. The difference is we just had to pay for more exams. They didn't and study for more. Yeah, and yep. that's it. Yep, <laughs> that's the. There's no. We're not better or worse. It's different. Again, no different than a. Imagine going to your gynecologist. I don't have one. Imagine that. And expecting them to do a heart surgery. Like, it's just not going to happen. They're different. And that's it. And they don't want to be the same. Correct. MDs stay in their lane. DO stay in their lane. Gynecologists that I keep bringing up stay in their lane. We stay in our lane. But how come within the chiropractic profession, I feel this. And like, if you are watching, listening, and you're not a chiropractor, like, maybe this is in your profession too. But like, within this profession, there's so much animosity. There's very little collaboration. My patient is my patient. You better not steal that patient. Yep. If you're marketing at the same event that another chiropractor is there, we're like giving them double middle fingers. Yeah. Over there, kind of like, why is that? <laughs> I think there is such like, I don't know. I think chiropractors in general, I'm going to generalize them. Have yeah, really generalize us. Really big egos. Yep. And so typically. I think like we all think we are doing the best thing that we could possibly be doing. And why would anyone ever do it differently? Yeah. So if there is a difference in how someone is treating a patient, we don't want to even it's deal like a, with it. I wouldn't have done that. Yeah. Like you meet someone in the street, they're like, oh, I go to my chiropractor and they do this, this, and this. Like immediately there's something in our brain. And I think this is human nature, not just chiropractic yes. professional yep. nature, where it's like, I would have done that differently. Yep. I could have fixed that in I, two visits instead of six visits or something I think like that. there like, is because there's so much different, there's so many different ways to practice. Correct. So I think there's a lot of PTs even out there who are getting into this now because there's a lot of PTs branching out into different ways of practicing. Yeah. So they're meeting other physical therapists and they're like, ooh, yeah. you do soft tissue work. You don't just do exercises. But that's kind of like how we are yep. with other chiropractors. Like I'll meet someone who just adjusts and it, like there's that tiny part of me that just wants to ask why. So, But that's not the right yeah. response. My knee-jerk reaction when I meet somebody who's like, oh, I see a chiropractor is like, A, if I'm at Thanksgiving with my family, like, I don't want to talk about work. Like, no. I don't want to adjust anybody. No. Nope. I don't want to show anybody exercises. Like, and it's not even giving things away for free. I'm happy to do that. But like, I'm here to eat a meal yep. right, and visit with my family. But like, if I meet somebody and they're like, oh, I see a chiropractor, I'm like, that's great. And I that's try to it. end the conversation there. It's just, or yeah, it's always just awesome. But when they spark that of like, so they've been doing this, this, and this, like, what do you think about that? My job is to provide advice. Yep. And I'll give my opinion when it's asked. Yes, yes. But I'm and not so, going to go up to people and say, your chiropractor is doing this wrong. This is what I would do. Yep. Unless it's actually wrong, which then I let them answer it. Like, yep. so you've been seeing this PT, ATC, chiropractor, personal trainer, if we're talking like rehab exercise stuff, like, because usually that's where things will go wrong. Yep. You can't wrong an adjustment. No. Like, I mean, you can, but like, it's a topic for a different day. Like especially with the exercise rehab movement side of things, if they're doing something, I'm like, all right, so like you've been seeing this person for how long? I'm like when was the injury? What are you working on? Like I try to get that history. If they've been seeing them for six, eight, like a good amount of visits, yeah. I'm like, and how's that going? I'm like, I don't know, it kind of feels the same. I'm like, well, what does that tell you? And I let them answer those questions. Like, yeah. Would you ex did you expect to get better or feel at least slight progress by now? And if their answer is yes, I'm like, I let Again, I let them answer that. Like, like it, what do you what do you want to do? What like, else do you yeah. want? What and are your goals? To be fair, I'm not even trying to get their business. Like no. usually these conversations are somebody who's out of town. They're never gonna be a patient of mine, no. something like that. It's a family friend, it's a weird uncle, it's something like that. But yeah, like I think the animosity of chiropractic is partially because we have such specializations and I mean, there's, uh, so technique wise, there's like Gonstead and AK and Diversified or Thompson and things like that. Like there's, um, what's the pregnancy one? Webster. Webster technique. Like there's a lot of different techniques that we can work hands on with people, but then there's also other modalities. Some chiros and PTs and ATCs love passive modalities, ultrasound, TENS yeah. units, roller tables, things like that. Like they might have their purpose. They might not. They might fit a specific person, but not a different person. Yeah. And that's where like just understanding the niche, like I'm phenomenal friends with some girls down the street or across the lake that do specifically Cairo for moms and Cairo for kids, mm -hmm. which also may or may not be their names, business names. And so like, I don't work with pregnant ladies. Like I didn't even adjust my wife when she was pregnant twice. I've never adjusted my kids. They're four and six. Like those are two different populations in a specialty 
that I don't work with them. No. Nope. So you would never hear me talk trash about what they are or aren't doing. No. Because I don't know about I it. I don't know enough about it to give an opinion on it. But some people do. Yeah. And that's where like I think the ego side is people like to have the biggest brain in the room. And I think that's where we are, I'll flat out say better, is that I want to be almost, a, I almost want the patient to be smarter than me. A, it would make my job really easy if they told me exactly what to do. Yeah. But B, like, tell I'm, me what you want. I'm working for my patient. I'm not working to steal patients or take, no, tell I, somebody else that they're doing a bad job. And I think there's a lot of where it comes in, like, even within like the sports chiropractic realm of like that, like, we do things similarly, but mm -hmm. different from other people still. That there's that fear of like, oh, they're going to steal my patient. But yeah. Is it stealing your patient if your patient is choosing to leave? If my I've had patients who have chosen to go to other providers, yep. and that's fine. Go. I've recommended, if yes. I've recommended that patient see other providers. If they're serving you better, leave. Yeah. You don't need to be in my office 100%. Yep. if you don't feel like you're getting a benefit out of it. Yep. So why would you want to keep someone seeing you yeah. that doesn't It'd feel like, like they're benefiting? in a relationship that's really toxic, and you're just sticking around. I don't want to say sticking around for the kids. Sticking around because you've been with them for three years, like, whatever. Like, if you're not getting anything out of that relationship, in this case, not that kind of relationship, yeah. but more so a beneficial relationship, yeah. leave. Yeah. Like, why not? One thing on that, like I mentioned, I, I've recommended patients to see other chiropractors. Sometimes, in the case that I brought up, where like somebody's not getting better, maybe I didn't tell them to go see another chiropractor because, like, again, not to stroke my ego, but like we were trying everything with this person. Yeah. So instead, like, hey, we need some imaging to see, like, What's actually happening in there? Should we see somebody who's more of a shoulder specialist? Maybe that's ortho, maybe that's acupuncture, maybe yeah. that's whatever it is. But a lot of times, like, I'll have a patient who sees another chiropractor purely just for that classic chiropractor, yep. five minute, seven minute adjustment, sometimes two minute adjustment. And most of the time, it's because they take their insurance yep. and they live right next to this office. It's like, awesome. If that chiropractor is right down the street, you're already paying your premium. You want to come see me for your movement dude side of things and like rehab side of things, and like maybe a little muscle work, all the things that the other chiropractor isn't doing. Fantastic. You mean yeah. I don't have to adjust you and blow up my bad shoulders even worse? That's fine. Great. I'm okay. I am that. happy to yep. do that. Like I'm happy to be that secondary yep. chiropractor character. Yeah. I think as a whole in the profession, like this is my goal and I know your goal too, is like we try very hard to not just play nice in the sandbox, but like make that sandbox bigger. Yep. Like we have great relationships with a lot of other chiropractic, chiropractic businesses, clinics, and therefore the providers in them. Um, and there's more than enough room to go around. Yeah. Like, what's the average? I don't know this number. I remember what it was when I was in school. Like, do you know the average percent of the population who's ever seen a chiropractor? I think it's like 10 to 20. Yeah. I, I want to say like 20 probably. Okay. But it's it, going up because I remember like when I was in school, they said like 10 to 12%. Yeah. And that was probably research that was outdated. To begin I know with, it's but, between. Yeah. I bet it's 15 to 20% now. And hell, we can call it 50%. Yeah. There's still so There's still many more people bucket. that you can see. And like we talked about earlier, like maybe that person saw a chiropractor because that number, the 15 to 20% is somebody who's ever seen a chiropractor. Yep. Maybe they saw a chiropractor when they were 13 and now they're 33 with a new injury, new issue. They might not go back to that other chiropractor. No. That person might be retired. Like, we don't need to fight in the sandbox. No. Let's make the sandbox bigger and a nice place to play, right? There's always going to be enough people. For sure. We're getting hurt. Yeah. Well, job security. Yeah. It's not like a funeral home job security, but it's pretty close. It is close. It's pretty close. So. Especially in the winter. Yeah. Well, one could argue the winter, the summer, the fall, the every season is a great we're, season. We're okay. fine. <laughs> Which again, we're not hoping people get injured. It's just human nature to get injured and it's human nature to argue about who's better and things yeah. like that. So... So there you have it. Lots of topics discovered, little heat exchanged. We get fired up about certain things, but myths, misnomers, chiropractic frequently asked questions, kind of. We kind of didn't propose them as a question, but they were kind of answering to questions, things like that. Hope you guys enjoy. Again, subscribe, like, do all the fun things, share whatever other YouTubers say to be cool. Um, the big thing is if you guys have a topic that you want us to hear, let us know. Fire us a DM on Instagram, shoot us a text, an email. However you can comment on this, do that because um, we want to talk about things that you guys want to know. So hope you enjoyed. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.